Hi, and welcome to today's live stream. Today, we're talking about graph databases. Yesterday, I did a live stream about contact tracing with Elasticsearch. And I was hinting that although it's quite nice to use Elasticsearch as a search engine there to find out where people went and, and find out the relations, graph databases might be the right way of actually doing this. And today I was researching a bit uh, about Neo4j. I can't tell you exactly yet why I'm doing this, but you're going to figure this out soon. So I was thinking, I was looking into Neo4j, uh, yeah, I was looking at Neo4j and how to basically set that up. At first I was thinking about Docker and then I figured out that Neo4j had a cloud. So I used Neo4j as a cloud. Um, and we're going to see that in a second. A, as Dimitri asked here, any thoughts on other graph databases? Tiger Graph is also an alternative that I know. Uh, and I had looked into it works quite similarly. But Tiger Graph, I think, does SQL you have querying. And in Neo4j, you have Cypher, the Cypher language. So these graph databases, I actually need to get into these as well. They're really, really good whenever you want to display or store relations between entities. The, this could be for the contact tracing that I talked about yesterday, or this could be for something like um, you have a social network and you want to find influencers who or who is very active with whom. This could also be something from manufacturing where you have a, like one example that people always use is the car. You have a car, car has tens of thousands of components and you can actually build relationships between all these components and between the, the manufacturers and the supply chain. So this means you can find out whenever you change something, what is actually impacted by this, by this change, which I find really, really cool and interesting. So that's why graph databases are very good in, in for these cases and relational databases with their with their uh, tables and uh, relations in between are not optimal for this let me know your questions around graph databases or what you think about graph databases in the comments in the chat i'm here answering all of this uh, whatever you have also about data engineering or my academy or something. Let me know what you or about jobs, data engineering jobs. Let me know what you think. I'm going to get to it. Hi, Michelle. So then let's start. Let's look into into it. I basically prepared this already. So how I set this up, how I start with this is I went to neo4j.com. And in Neo4j, you have the Get Started button on the top right. I'll make that a bit bigger. On the top right, you have a Get Started button. And here you can use Neo4j, J Aura, Aura DB. I think it's called Aura DB. Uh, this, the cool thing is, this is free. So you can start for free. You can play around with it. And that's exactly what I did. And I just want to get into it and show you basically how I, uh, how I, how, how I experienced it. There's a question, how many types of such databases are there? There are actually a lot of graph databases or a few. Uh, you can go to DB engines, DB engine ranking. That's my top site where I always go DB engine ranking. And then I look at on the left graph database management systems. So you can see here Neo4j, Cosmos DB, Orient, Graph, DB, Tiger Graph, and so on. So there are actually, there are a few graph databases out there that you can use. All right, so back to Neo4j. So when you get started here, you can uh, press get started, then you can even log in with your Google account and you end up at uh, the starting screen where you can create an instance. And the cool thing is, as I said, these instances are, uh, one instance is for free. So you can go here, new instance. I can't select it here right now because yeah, I already have one running. Aura DB for free is one free instance. Limits uh, on graph size. That's a bit, if you have a, a lot of data, that's a big limit here. 
Um, but for playing around, for learning it, for, for testing, that's actually very nice. Um, and it's auto pauses th after three days of inactivity. I'm guessing they're doing this to save uh, save money because if you're not using it, why should that instance run? This makes no sense. They also have a lot of instance types where you can see here the hour pricing. So it's yeah, it's it's really cool. You can use the Neo 4J. You can have you have a, a few versions here. Neo 4J version. You have a few locations where you can set it up. Belgium, UK. Yeah, got it. Australia, UK, even in Germany is interesting. So, yeah, this instance type. And then once you have this running, you can actually uh, log into or explore this instance. So you have two options. When you set this up, I set this up with a, a test database. Um, so I set this up with the movies data set. They have that as an example. And you have here two options. You can do go explore or you can go query. I first, the cipher language, I haven't tried it out. So I the querying part, mm, it's not yet. I don't yet get it. But let's, let's explore this. And the cool thing is that they, don't show this again, restore this. So what you end up then with is something like this, where you have all the relations where you can see what's all happening. So as, as this is on the right, you see this is the uh, purple are the movies, the yellows are the persons, and then you have relations or, or yeah, um, relationships between each of these. So for instance, here, let's go to Apollo 13 here. Then you can see Apollo 13, who actually, well, let's not use this. So you see here, acted in, Tom Hanks acted in Apollo 13, Bill Paxton, Kevin Bacon. You see here, this connection. It even makes this a bit clearer. Gary Sinise. So this is how, the, how this all... Um, this all works. Now, you, of course, you can now get into this and you can build a search graph or you can, like here you can say, I think it's called person acted in. I think that already shows this. Here, then it rebuilds this and it puts everyone in here. All right, let, let's stay with the, let's stay with the example for um, for Apollo 13. So you could go, now where was that here? Show filters, you could add a filter here. Say, I want a filter for the movie and I want a filter for the title, Apollo 13 here, apply filter. And then it's going to filter this and you, you're going to see, okay. Kevin Bacon, Gary Sinise, Tom Hanks acted in this. And then you can yeah, here, if you add here more, also movie, I think it's, you need to do this acted in, directed and produced. I'm not sure if it's wrote as well. Then you see more, what are you seeing more here? Movie. I think you should see more here. Let me cast away. Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas here we have here the Wachowskis who directed it. Tom Hanks, Halle Berry. So as you can see, this is is really nice to actually see the see the connections between this. So if we now direct remove directed from here, does this then oh this actually doesn't remove this. Eh. Actually, I'm not sure what this does then. What is this? So as you see, I'm I'm still also playing around with it. When you click on a uh, on a node, 
then you can see here the relationships and you can actually then see what is all um, connected to this. So directed by Tom Tiger, Tiger wrote by David Mitchell. Yeah. So that, that's, what do you think? Is, is this cool here? I think this is really cool. And this is a small database. So yeah, that's how, that's how easy this is. I think it's really cool. Yeah, but I think you get the point. So that's something I just wanted to show you. So you could now try to try to work with this. They also have a query tool here where you can do the same thing. Let me put up my password. Where you can write this with the with the cipher query here. But I'm not sure. As I said, I'm not I haven't tried this, so I'm not sure what a what a cipher is going to look like. Has anybody of you also tried this? before or is this some also something completely new what do you think about a database that you can't query about with sql with sql i think it's uh, as i read here um the cipher basics actually they work a bit like um like sql they're not I've only heard of Neo4j graph database and not Aura DB. Is that simply full managed versus self managed? I think so, yeah. I think so. I think so because um, they have here products. They have here Neo4j uh, graph database self managed. Ah, you don't see it. I'm sorry. Here they have Neo4j graph database self managed deploy anywhere and neo4j aura db fully managed graph database as a service they also have different different use cases here um aura ds graph data science so they they try to get into the data science realm but uh yeah it's for, i i just thought about the simple database uh, going with Aura DB because it's uh, it's something everybody can try out. So give it a try. I think it's it's really cool. Tiger Graph is the graph database which supports graph based SQL. Yeah, 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 yeah. or G SQL, the new query language for graphs, which is part of the ISO standard. Yeah, exactly. That's I think that's one of the big plus of uh, of Tiger Graph. I said, I haven't tried it out, right? So, but I, I think if you can do that, that would be a big plus to actually work with that and uh, yeah, use a SQL instead of a different query language. But you can here, you can connect with, uh, you have Python, you have Java clients for this. They also have for the, for my test database, they have a, a example script here find and return persons find person create and return friendships so th they they try to give you already the the ways of uh, yeah, playing around with it creative create create persons create friendships and uh, start with a simple example here with alice and david yeah so Exactly the same thing you can do with Java, .NET, Spring Boot, Go. Yeah, I think it's it's really helpful. As I said, the the um, it's limited to fifty thousand nodes. So a node is, in this case, basically a person and the the person. It's the movie, and in this these we have 171 and the relationships because a person can have multiple relationships this is uh, 253 from 175,000. uh is there an upcoming airflow course on the academy yeah i'm thinking uh we're going to talk about that i think tomorrow a bit about airflow more i i made a post yesterday or day before yesterday uh, about airflow and yeah I'm not sure when it comes, uh, maybe end of next month or most likely in July then, 
because I'm also on uh, on a short vacation. So yeah, but it's coming. This is coming. I think airflow is something that people have to know. Uh, people are want to see this. It's high in high demand. So yeah, let's talk about this tomorrow. Okay, then thanks for being here. Thanks for everybody on LinkedIn. Thanks for everybody on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor and uh, leave a like. Maybe put a co something in the comment what I missed or what you think about graph databases. Uh, we really like to, to get your feedback on what you think. So, um, of course, whenever I say now I'm going to go, there's another question. Uh, I'm master's of uh, science IT graduate 10 years back. Now, again, I learned some Python and SQL, then done many small projects in data engineering. I'm searching opportunities to work. I read your blogs about data engineering and your course uh, website. Yep, learndataengineering.com, by the way. If you want, check it out. I have a lot of, a lot of course, every, basically everything you need is there. Uh, is it really very inspired for me to grow more? Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought there was a question coming. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's this is a this is a a great foundation for everybody who's wanting to go into data engineering, coding, and um, coding and relational databases slash SQL. It's a great um, it's a great opportunity to level up to engineering to get more into processing of data and into data platforms if the engineering part is something for you so yeah congrats divya congrats that's awesome all right see you later